In this video, we're going to talk about the Raspberry Pi computer system and how it can help us in education. And I'm a big fan of the Raspberry Pi, so I'm going to be a little bit positive. I'm going to be pretty gushing about these systems. And I'm assuming that you're interested in Raspberry Pis. Maybe you've heard of them before, or maybe you're even an expert in Raspberry Pis and you just want to see what this video is all about. It's about using Raspberry Pis in school. So feel free to check out the comments down below and help answer any questions if you have a lot of experience with these devices. So you'll notice, first of all, that I have uh, two boxes in front of me. So let's have a look at what a Raspberry Pi is. Let's look at a couple of options we have for buying a Raspberry Pi. Then let's take a look at how we might be able to use them in a school environment. We'll talk about some of the limitations of a Raspberry Pi, but we're going to mostly talk about how they can be beneficial. So I have two boxes in front of me. You'll notice a small box and a big box. There's no tricks here, but what's the difference between them? I guess, first of all, the Raspberry Pi is really just a circuit board. So these are two exactly the same computers. This is a four gigabyte Raspberry Pi. This is a four gigabyte Raspberry Pi. This one is called the Raspberry Pi 4, and this one is called the Raspberry Pi 400. The big difference between these two is that this one here does not include a keyboard or a mouse. This one's built into a keyboard and includes a mouse. So they're the exact same computer from a functional standpoint. This one just is a little bit more of a complete computer kit where it includes a keyboard and it includes a mouse. But for all intents and purposes, they're the same system. They have the same functionality. Now, these kits here that don't include the keyboard, you can also get an 8 gig version of the Raspberry Pi, which a lot of people that are enthusiasts around Raspberry Pi will get the 8 gig version. Uh, this one here, that option's not available. Maybe there'll be a new version that comes out that does offer an 8 gig with the integrated keyboard. But for now, they're, they're separate. And that's one of the advantages of, of this kit. Now, I, I picked up an old keyboard. I was able to pick this up for about $20 Canadian, $15 US, I picked up a keyboard. Of course, I had an old mouse lying around in my box of things I should have recycled, but one day I would need them. This is that day. So I have an old keyboard, I have an old mouse uh, that I can use with this Raspberry Pi kit. I can also, with a monitor, these connect up to a television, anything with an HDMI port you will find that you know, those can be very inexpensive, especially if you get a smaller dimension monitor or television. You can actually find those sometimes at secondhand shops or if you have pawn shops in your area. Just look for a smaller one. Something that's 17 or 20 inches can be very, very reasonable. Both of these systems will require you to get that television. You, may already, already, you might already have that television. So what's the difference between the two and how can we buy them? I'll put a link to a kit. I'm not going to put a link to this particular kit because I found this was a little bit overpriced and their 8 gig kit is actually kind of ridiculously priced, at least on Amazon up here in Canada. This one here is very reasonable. It's about $140 for this one. It's about $120 Canadian for these. So the price would be a little bit less in the US, but you can get this under $100 US right around of $100 US for this one here. Let's take a look at what's in each of these kits. So let's take a look at this particular little kit. Now, this is the first time that I've bought a kit by this particular manufacturer. There are a number of different companies that will package together these little kits. And I may have bought it from a reseller off Amazon. I don't know, it was a little more expensive than I would like anyways, um, but I could check out their website maybe. But if I look at it, you'll notice that I have this little box here. When we open up the top here, you'll see, I can already see that I've got the computer itself and I've got the case here. So let's take out the case first. So if I take out the case, you can see it's a very nice little case. This one here is a logoed. So it's red and white, the colors of the, of the, the pie itself. So we got the red and white. You'll notice that there are slots in the case for different ports. So I'll have the micro SD card here. I will have the back end ports. I'll have an ethernet port, gigabit ethernet port, USB 3, USB 2. And I'll have uh, slots for HDMI and uh, for audio, video, and for um, power. So nice little case. I like the case quite a bit, but there is something I don't like about this case that's coming up. And uh, then we'll have the cord here. So this particular cord, again, it's branded, Raspberry Pi cord. It's a micro HDMI to HDMI cable. 
No sense taking that out of the plastic. Um, we'll have the computer itself. So this is my little Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, four gigs of RAM. And inside is the circuit board. We'll have a look at that in just a moment. Then I'll have another cable in here. This is a power cable. So this power cable is nice actually because it has a little switch in there that's going to allow me to uh, switch it on and off without having to plug and unplug it. It also comes with a little micro um, SD card and the adapter. So micro SD to SD card. And if I look here, it's actually a little card here. You can see it's a little, there's a little tiny 32 gig card that'll have the operating system already pre-installed for me. It'll be this card that goes into the Raspberry Pi, but you want to hang on to this because if you ever need to reinstall the operating system, you can use this with another computer and you can download a little utility that will allow you to install other operating systems, including things like gaming operating systems. And then we go in here, reach into my little box here, it's very exciting. Oh, we have a Raspberry Pi case fan. Uh, it's just a case fan, so I'm not gonna open that up any further. And then we have the Raspberry Pi power supply. And it's the official power supply. Again, it's really nice because it's on brand. So you can see here that it's got the Raspberry Pi logo on it and it's white. So I have a nice little kit here. Let's have a look at the Raspberry Pi, which is actually, this is the board itself. So you can pick up, if you just want the board itself and you don't want any of these accruements, maybe it's the second or third or fourth Raspberry Pi you're buying, you already have all this stuff, you just want to get a circuit board. And so if I open up the board here, so let's get that opened up, you'll see here that I have the Raspberry Pi itself and a little bit of documentation of how to work with it. So a little Raspberry Pi safety and user guide and a little part of how to work with it. Not, not a lot of documentation. Now here we have the ports, the USB, the US, uh, USB, USB 3, the Ethernet ports, so they'll fit in the case. Audio, again, the same ports. Here is that GPIO port. So this is a whole bunch of pins that allow me to do things like control uh, robots, do all sorts of neat things. But that's where this case comes into play. This case will not expose these pins these pins will be buried inside the case. So if I'm just using it as a general purpose computer, that's great. But if I wanna do any type of electronics work where I wanna connect into the GPIO, then that's going to require me to open the case. You can, I, I see a lot of folks that will actually run the case just like this. So they'll, they'll put the Raspberry Pi into the case and then they'll, they'll just, um, just run it like this. So you can pop it on and off quite easily, work with those different pins there but it can be a little bit of a, of a challenge. So just something to bear in mind. But again, you can also get the eight gig version, which is uh, just a few dollars more, but a little bit more powerful. And for a lot of people that are, you know, doing hobbies, like working with uh, actuators and all that sort of fun stuff, they're going to, they're going to put, they're going to mount that, might mount that into their project, mount that onto, well, mount it onto a lot of things. Very powerful little computer. So that's, uh, that's this case here. That's this kit here. Okay, so let's take a look at the 400. This is a little bit of a nicer kit. I really do prefer this one, uh, especially if I'm giving this to somebody. So we'll take out the outer sleeve and we'll open up the kit itself. So on the kit here, when you first open it up, it's going to be the keyboard. So this is your computer. This particular keyboard, if you look at the uh, back here, let's just turn it around a little easier to see you'll see that all of my GPIO ports are exposed. I really like that. You'll see that my micro SD card is already inserted. So it's just ready to be connected up and powered on. I have two HDMI, mini HDMI ports. Just a quick note, you wanna to connect to the first one first and the second one second. First one being the one closest, uh, sorry, other way around. First one being the one closest to the power supply. Second one being uh, furthest away from the power supply connector. There's the power supply connector, USB 3, USB 2, gigabit ethernet. I really like this for a lot of reasons. One, it looks great, but also the GPIO is exposed. So you can sit there and this, this will become your computer. It's actually a nice keyboard. It's actually quite a nice keyboard to work with. Now inside of the kit, besides that, we have a couple of other important elements. We have the Raspberry Pi power supply. So this is going to be similar to the other kit. In fact, it's the exact same power supply. So you can see here, 
exact same power supply that we saw in the other kit. Maybe a little bit of a different box there. Uh, we also have the Raspberry Pi official mouse. So it's a cute little mouse. Oh, it's sealed up, so we're gonna have to grab a pair of scissors here. So I'm just gonna cut the plastic on there. And so the mouse is a little red and white mouse here. It's quite nice. You know, it's a comfortable little mouse. It's not, you know, some lightweight gaming mouse, but USB mouse. And that'll be nice to have as our pointing device. A white and red mouse there. And then this always comes out. It's supposed to be sitting in here, but it always comes out. This is just the uh, micro SD to SD adapter. It's not populated. There's nothing in there because it's already, as I showed you a few moments ago, that card is already in the Raspberry Pi. And then underneath this, if I pull this out, is a slide it out here, is a power, or sorry, a, a video cable. So this here is, uh, again, the micro HDMI to HDMI. And then also with this one, you get a very nice book. So we have this book. So this is a very nice book. It's the official Raspberry Pi beginner's guide. It is the fourth edition, which is for the 400. And the whole first part of this book just talks about Raspberry Pis, gives you a lot of information on them. This is great. For somebody that's just get, well, getting started with the Raspberry Pi, talks about what you can expect. Notice that the case here is actually the case that came in the other kit, but it talks about the Raspberry Pi 400 setup, uh, talks about working with the software, um, talks about some of the uh, things that you can do here, some little projects that you can do, some programming projects, talks about electronic projects you can do. You would have to buy the little LEDs and the resistors in order to do this, but those are also available and fairly inexpensive. So this here, if, if somebody was to get a Raspberry Pi 400 and work through this book, they would actually know an awful lot about computers. They would be in really good shape. They'd be doing some fun, fun things. So there's a lot of different things you can do. This is a great read, and I recommend that for anybody who gets the beautiful Raspberry Pi 4. So now that we know what comes with each of these kits and how they're basically equivalent, let's have a little bit of a look at what exactly we can do with a Raspberry Pi. Now, when it comes to these systems, I think what we really need to do is, is change from a hardware specifications mindset into a functional specification mindset. So if we have a younger learner or even a learner that's a little bit older, what do they actually use a computer for? And in a school setting, it's actually not that much. They use the computers in order to learn uh, how to create documents. You can do that with a Raspberry Pi. How to create maybe presentations. You can do that with a Raspberry Pi. To go onto the internet to research different subjects across the, you can do that with a Raspberry Pi. To take notes, you can do that with a Raspberry. I'm just, I'm not gonna say you can do that with a Raspberry Pi. All of these things you can do with a Raspberry Pi. You can program, learn how to program in multiple different languages using these devices. Uh, you, can, you can do some things with Raspberry Pis that you can't do very easily with a traditional desktop or laptop system. Uh, they have a GPIO, General Purpose Input Output Port on here, where you can actually go in and connect up to motors, actuators, uh, sensors. You can connect up to a number of different devices. So you can use these as, as the heart of a IoT, Internet of Things project, uh, maker projects, robotic projects. You could build weather stations by connecting to weather sensors, motion detectors. There's so many things you can do with these that are they're really good learning activities for, for kids. But the basics, you know, creating documents, going onto the internet, watching educational videos, you can do all of these things with the Raspberry Pi. Another great advantage of the low cost is that you're also able to give more people access to a resource on a more frequent basis. So instead of having to share a single expensive resource, you can give students their own resource so that you can have concurrent access to say an online course. You don't have to wait until somebody else is finished with the resource. You can have that resource dedicated just to you. Now, one of the things you're not really going to do with a Raspberry Pi is use it as a modern gaming system or use it as a video editing suite or use it as a, you know, music editing. There are limitations related to graphics and raw processing power. However, 
you can play games. You can play Minecraft natively within the operating system. You can also install a whole new operating system called RetroPie, which will allow you to play arcade games and console games from the 80s, 90s, early 2000s. The nice thing about that is because they have a micro SD card slot, you can put that operating system on a micro SD card, turn off the system, put in that operating system slot, or put in the micro SD card, boot the system, and it boots right into that operating system. So it's very easy to switch out between different operating systems. And there are several for the Raspberry Pi. Now you might say, well, you know, my students need to be able to work on Microsoft Office. Not a problem. You can use the online version of Microsoft Office, connect through a web interface, works just fine using Raspberry Pi. You're not going to install Office natively on the Raspberry Pi, but you can still access the web version, which is pretty full featured. Some people will say, well, I need to be able to connect up to a specific Windows program. You can use the Raspberry Pi to connect up to something like Office 3 or Microsoft Windows 365. So as you can see, I was able to take control of a Windows 365 PC, do whatever I needed to do without having to go out and buy an expensive machine for that connection. Now that being said, it is important to, to be aware of Windows 365, the system I was connecting to, is pretty much monthly the same cost as buying a Raspberry Pi board. So in, if it's provided by your employer or if it's provided by the school, that can be a really great way to give somebody an inexpensive computer and allow them to connect up to a more powerful Windows system that's controlled by the IT department. One of the things I like about the 400, and it kind of doesn't get said as much, I don't think, is that they're beautifully packaged. They're a really nice package. You can give this to someone, a child, as a gift, as their first computer, and they're going to feel good about this system. They're going to be like, this is my computer. This is my own computer. You know, I now have a system of my own that I can use. I can learn. I can program. I can do things. I can play Minecraft. And it's a sense of ownership and a sense of pride that I think has value. It's a confidence, it sounds crazy, I know. I don't wanna to go too far into this. This is a confidence building gift. This is something you can give to a child and it builds confidence because it's not terribly expensive but it's exceptionally functional and it's powerful in that regard. So I, I think that's a good thing. I hope you found that interesting, but I'm interested in you. Are you using a Raspberry Pi right now? What are you using it for? Are you planning on getting one? What would you like to use it for? Comment down below and maybe we can, as a community, talk a little bit about how Raspberry Pis might be a useful tool within existing classrooms or to get people into a computing environment at a low cost. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.